Welcome to Tampa Home Talk with your host, native Tampa real estate girl, Katrina Madewell, a full-time, passionate, out-of-the-box thinker, love for home ownership kind of realtor with over 21 years of combined mortgage and real estate experience. Tune in every week at this time for expert advice on everything you need to know about home ownership, finance, maintaining great credit, building wealth, and making your everyday life better, and how you can be financially successful today and tomorrow. Remember, love where you live or let Katrina fix it. Now, here's your host of Tampa Home Talk, Katrina Madewell. Welcome. This is Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're glad you're here. And we'll be here every week, same time, same place. And if you've never listened to Tampa Home Talk before, the mission of our show is to help you keep and maintain great credit, live within your means and build wealth. We love to talk about anything in and around the real estate space and everything that we can do to make your everyday life better. And so we've got a fantastic show lined up for you today. And uh, our special guest, his niche is a little bit different. So he's a general contractor by trade, but he has done some pretty amazing things. We were talking actually before the show and we'll share some of those with you guys on air, um, but it's a pretty interesting process. And so without further ado, I'd love to welcome to the show, Mr. Stephen Perry. Do you go by Steve or Stephen? What do you prefer? Probably Steve is best. Yeah. Steve, that's what I thought. Yeah. And you're with JS Perry and Company. Welcome. Thank you, Katrina. Great to be here. And so you are a licensed general contractor, correct? That's right. And yeah. tell me about yourself. Like, what do you do? What's your specialty? What do you guys, what's your niche? Well, our niche is really probably high end residential. Do you do custom um, homes from the ground up? We do. We build custom homes from the ground up. They tend to be one off type projects. Um, now, when you say one off type projects, what does that mean? That means that the uh, we'll connect the owner with an architect and we'll design a custom home for them. Gotcha. And then detail it out and get it exactly the way they want it. Make it fit their needs in every way. We'll have to share some of those stories too, like on some of the properties you've done and some of the neat projects that you've done because sure. you've done some pretty cool stuff. And how long have you been around? How long have you been a general contractor in this line of work? Um, since 1988. All right. So you're one of the builders that made it through the storms, I yeah. should say. Yeah, we shifted over to uh, focusing on... Um, uh, remodeling during that time period but uh yeah it was a it was a time we saw a lot of people go by the wayside but we were quite steady through the through the whole thing it was amazing yes that's nice and you guys um you also do multifamily type construction so do you guys build like duplexes triplexes and quads and that kind of stuff we would yeah yeah if somebody had a special project they wanted to do or one of our if one of our other clients approached us on it we'd probably uh take on that project yeah so um talk to me a little bit about that like what's the process uh, we'll use building a custom home because you do a lot of that stuff. Is yeah. that pretty much your niche? Like you start probably at two fifty and eight hundred and go on up. I would yeah, imagine. pretty much so. Yeah, that's it's a niche for us. So what's the process? Like somebody comes to you and they say, "Hey, Steve, you know we're ready. We're at that next phase in our life where we want to build our dream dream home. This is going to be our last home. We're going to retire in it, or you know until it's too big and we're ready to move." Yeah. And so what's the process? Like, do you sit down with them and talk about design ideas and what they really want or what they don't have in their home now and, you know, what they'd like to add to their next home or do you leave that to the designers? Generally, I will leave it to the designer, but first thing I do is I'll sit down with them and we'll establish a basic program or a basic uh, scope of work that they want to accomplish. If they want to build a custom home, we'll talk about their needs and wants, uh, find out a bit about their lifestyle, find out the uh, rough scale of the project. Um, find out some of the design details and aspects of the project, and then we'll try to coordinate them with a, with an architect or designer that's best suited for them because we work with a lot of really fantastic architects. That makes sense. Yeah, and we have some that are very specialized in certain niches and some that are better suited for different types of projects. So it just kind of varies depending upon what they need. Then we adjust and, and uh, find the architect or designer for them. Now, are there times when someone comes to you and they say, and you'll probably be better to, suited to give an example than I would, but they say, hey, we'd really like to do this. And they give you an example and you go, well, yeah, that makes sense. But have you thought about this? You know, when you're talking about lifestyle. So maybe you can give an example or share a story. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, occasionally we'll have uh, a customer that will have a, uh, an idea or a, a thought about what they want to do. And maybe it's a great idea. Maybe it's a, an idea that hadn't really been fully cultivated or thought out. And maybe it's not a great idea in terms of resale value or it might not might not be money well spent. So we'll try to advise them on that. Like what? Give me an example of something. Um, we had a customer that wanted to um, renovate a house that was on the beach. 
And having the house down at the ground level is a great idea. It's very personal. It's very accessible. But we were doing such an extensive renovation on this house that we suggested that he raise it up above the floodplain. Mm, excellent so we, advice. Yeah, so we actually raised it up about four feet or three three foot nine. So you changed the existing structure. You didn't pull it down. You actually raised it? We just took it and jacked it up and built a new foundation underneath it. Now, how the heck did you do that? <laughs> Um, well, you got to have specialized jacks and you run beams underneath the house and then you put cribbing or big blocks of wood underneath it to support the house temporarily while you build the new foundation. Gotcha. You just jack it up to the new height little bit by little bit and then uh, uh, construct the new foundation and then lower it back down on the new foundation. That's interesting, Steve. Being in real estate, you know, and the person listening might not even realize what a blessing that was to do that or suggest that because... Mm -hmm. A lot of the people in Pinellas County are having some real issues and challenges with flood insurance. No doubt it's, about it. It's been a topic that we've actually covered on the show. And, and if you've listened to Tampa Home Talk for any period of time, you know that we've discussed this and there's pretty much still a Band-Aid on it. So, oh, yeah. It's a huge factor when somebody's buying a house. And if they're going to if they're gonna put a lot of money into a waterfront home, uh, it's a major consideration because your insurance, your flood insurance can be extraordinarily expensive. And so we saved them. I think we saved them about 20000 a year in flood insurance. Wow. Yeah, so that was a good move. That's amazing. So is there ever a time somebody wanted to build something, you're like, oh, I'll build it for you if you want it, but that's really just not a good use of money or not a good resale value or yeah, anything like that? Yeah, we're faced with that periodically. Um, and so we have to tactfully say, okay, well, let's take another look at this and re let's really analyze this and see if it makes sense. Can you give me another example? Um, let's see. We had a guy that... Um, he wanted to open up the entire downstairs of his house and create like a kind of a loft area and turn it all into one huge open space. He liked the idea of, of having it just be open. And it's a great idea, and you know, conceptually. And you see a lot of open plans today, uh, more so than 20 years ago. Absolutely. And so, but he was, he really wanted to go wild with it. And it, it, it probably would have destroyed his, his resale value if he'd done the entire thing the way he had kind of envisioned it. Which so was? Would just totally open, just one huge open space down on the ground level, including bedrooms and everything. Oh, so kind of like literally a warehouse building. Just almost like of. a warehouse loft type space. And it probably would have been cool and it probably would have been quite attractive. And it and would very have been trendy. Oh, it would have been extraordinarily trendy. And he probably would have loved it. But also, um, his resale value resale nightmare. probably would have been a nightmare. And so, we, we kind of tempered him back a little bit and put a few walls in and did some other things to kind of divide the space up a little bit better and still came up with quite an open plan, but it was a little more sensible. I think sometimes when people are you know, thinking about these ideas and they want to do it, it's super cool in the moment. Yeah. But what they don't realize is you know, you're not thinking about resale in the end, and you really should be. Totally. Because if you're not, it can cost you a lot when you go to resell it. That's no doubt about it. And you know, a, a couple of things have to happen, Steve, right? You know this. Either A, you have to make those modifications before you sell it to appeal to a general home buyer audience, or you gotta change the price to compensate for that. Totally. And you can you might have to drop the price radically to get it sold. Yes. There was a house one time and, and since we're on the topic, I'll just bring it up. Yeah. I had I saw this house and it actually ended up being it was a foreclosure. So they, you know, they knew already with the wildness of the setup they were going to have to price it aggressively because of the way it was. Mm. Um, and there were some damages and stuff to it because it was actually a drug house, mm. which was kind of crazy. Okay, but the way they had it, so the front door was kind of like at an angle. So if you're walking up to the house, you turn to the left if you can imagine. There's like a single door. And then, you, like, you know how most houses, like, you walk up to it, you can see in. You can yeah. see back to the back or whatever. It wasn't like that. So you walk in, it was to the left, and it was just literally like a concrete wall. Oh, wow. And, like, like almost brick still. And then um, you would walk to the right and then to the left and then go straight. So it's yeah. kind of like almost like a little maze when you first walk in. Yeah. And uh, the first thing you saw was the pool. So the pool was in the front of the house, and there was a catwalk that went across the pool into the main area of the home, and it was a loft. It was like a big open loft area. Now, not the bedroom so much as what you shared a moment ago, yeah. but there was a big open, like, four-sided fireplace and huge windows mm. that, that opened up to, like, you know, nature. It was really pretty. Now, this would have been amazing, like, total bachelor pad for sure. Like, I yeah. couldn't see a family living here, but it was an amazing place, like, for a single or, you know. Right. Anyway, the, uh, because this had been a drug house, all of the windows were, like, spray-painted black. So you, it was like, 
you know, they, uh, they obviously the bank, again, if they don't want to clean that up or remediate it, which a lot of them have been doing because it's a substantial difference Sure. when they resell it, this particular one didn't, I think just because the floor plan was so odd anyway. And so basically they, they sold it with the black windows and everything. And then uh, the kitchen was kind of like off to the right and the bedrooms were spread out, but it was, it was nonetheless a super cool, different, quirky house. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know, I mean, how, have you ever walked into a home? That's the first thing you see is the pool and there's a cat walk across the pool to get to the house. It's a little different. No. I, I so should have videoed that house. Oh yeah. You know, Sounds had, interesting. Yeah. I had been thinking about this and it was the perfect setup for a drug house because you couldn't see right in it when you went to the front door. Wow. Yeah. So. You know, a product like that, it's, you know, the right person may pay a premium for that, but most of the people might say, I don't know, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Right. It's not going to appeal to the general audience and, yeah. uh, and population. So uh, you listen to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Mabel. we got Steve Perry in the studio with us today. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about some of our uh, relocation and move-in clients, which we get them pretty often, and how you manage a job site when you're actually not there. We'll be back in just a minute. Stick around. Hi, this is Aaron Davis, owner of Hillsboro Title. Hillsboro Title is a local, family-owned title agency here in Tampa Bay. Our service, strength, and knowledge make us different. We've served Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. From Polk County to the Gulf, Pasco to Manatee, Tampa Bay, we've got you covered. Call us at 813-712-8888, 712-8888, or visit us on the web at thebesttitle.com, thebesttitle.com. That's thebesttitle.com. I'm Katrina May- with Keller Williams Realty and Tampa Home Talk. And for more than 23 years, we have been helping homeowners sell flexible terms with the right to sell it yourself. Let my results speak. They were able to get us a full price offer and a contract in our house in nine days. I just wanted to express my gratitude in finding a cash buyer for my property in less than 24 hours. I'm not bragging. I'm applying for a job. I want to be your realtor. Call 813-777-1196. Thank you. Elder Ford of Tampa's biggest sale is going on now. We're offering the 2017 F-150 XLT for as low as $248 a month for 36 month lease. That's only $8 a day. $47.77 due at signing. Zero security deposit losses of thank you to our veterans, active military personnel, and first responders. Ford is offering $1,000 bonus cash on all new Fords. And at Elder Ford, we'll match that offer with an additional $1,000 for $2,000 in savings. Visit ElderFordofTampa.com today. $2,000 off MSRP and all new 2016, 2017 iFord vehicles like 2017 Ford F-150. Offer ends May 31st. Your life turns upside down when you suffer injuries because of someone else's carelessness. From medical malpractice to auto accidents, you need to know what to do before one happens. Find out Mondays at 8 a.m. on Rights and Repairs on Money Talk 1010 a.m. Dave Papa and Stan Geip from the Papa and Geip Law Firm, along with Dan Cooley of Collision Tech, will take your calls and discuss your rights to gain the best outcome possible. That's every Monday at 8 a.m. on Money Talk 1010 a.m. Welcome back. This is Tampa Home Talk. Thank you so much for sticking with us for the break. We appreciate you. We're glad you're here. And if you're just catching the show, we're here today with Steve Perry. And he is the owner of J.S. Perry and Company. He is general contractor. And we're talking all about those neat little custom projects, some of those higher end homes and the sort of things that you don't necessarily talk about every day. And so with us being, you know, greater Tampa Bay, where the Gulf beaches, they're super warm, way better than even on the other coast, if you ask me. And, you know, we've had people that move from California and if you've ever dipped your toe into the Pacific Ocean, you can see why they would love the Gulf of Mexico when they move here, not to mention our prices are like a walk in the park. So when you think about those things and you have them in mind, have you had customers that are relocating from out of the area and they're like, you know, we're not really going to be here to manage the project. So we need you to be super hands on and, you know, communicate things with us and, and just, you know, what's the scope of a project for something like that? Oh, yeah, for sure. We do get customers like that. Uh Maybe as much as, I don't know, 50% of our customers are people from out of town that uh, are moving to the area or this is a second home for them. Uh, sometimes they'll have some some uh, residency here, but then also be located elsewhere as well. Um, but uh, what we do is we just set it up so that the communication remains strong through the process. Make sure that they understand who all the key te- team members are. Uh, and so that they can communicate with the architect, they can communicate with me. Yeah, who are some of those people that are involved that would be those key players? Mainly the architect, the interior designer, and the builder. Those are the three key folks involved okay. in a project like this. 
Yeah. And it's really important for all of those folks to work very cooperatively together, I would imagine. No doubt about it. You got to work together symbiotically and it's got to be a, it's got to be a good good marriage. Is it hard for you sometimes when people are like, "Oh, I've got my own designer or architect and they bring like this plethora of people that you've never worked with before?" Is that a little bit of a challenge sometimes? Sometimes it could, it could be a little bit of a challenge. We occasionally we run into that where they have a very specific designer or somebody from out of town that they want to work with. Recently we had a had a guy that brought a guy in from Russia and he did an amazing amazing design on this major major remodel tell me about it what was he doing well he his ideas were quite grandiose and they 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 fit well what the owner had requested um and they were quite opulent i mean really amazing not your garden variety house project at all and uh it was it was completely over the top but uh the designer just wasn't acquainted with the codes and the regulations for coastal building in america Mm. so he's from russia everything's in metric uh, and so we had to do a major conversion on it. And then, uh, of course, there were complications with codes. And we had to ultimately introduce uh, local architects and interior designers to solidify the plan and make it work. And can we talk about that a little bit? Because you touched on something very important that I don't want to skip past. And I'd like to talk about a little bit. You mentioned coastal construction. Yes. Why is that important? How is that different? Can you tell me about that? Let's imagine you have somebody moving in from another area and they have no idea what you're talking about. How do you explain sure. that? Yeah, well, um, you know, the easiest thing to imagine is just the wind factor because on the beach or on the intercoastal, there's a huge wind factor. Uh, and so the wind's going to And the building blow. requirements are different too. Building requirements are quite different. And so if you're in a high velocity zone, as an example, you'll have to put a deep foundation on your project. That hmm. means you got to put a pile driven uh, system underneath your house. So it could be a wood driven pile or a concrete pile. But basically, it's like a bunch of telephone poles that are scattered underneath your foundation that go way down deep into the ground to make sure that if, if, let's say a big tidal, uh, you had a big tidal swale and the the water came in and uh, rushed your house, um, you could wash the ground out from underneath the house and the house would still be standing. And so those are requirements in high velocity zones as an example. How far down do those have to go? Uh, It varies depending upon the soil the soil uh, for that area where they are. So we'll have a geotechnical company come out and do borings. They'll study the soil, and then they'll make recommendations on uh, the desired foundation. How long does something like that take? Well, that process will probably be a couple weeks. Okay. It's not bad. They bring a drill rig out to the site and just bore these deep holes, and they Mm -hmm. they study the soil. They do a complete write-up on it, and then they make a recommendation for the... uh, for the pile and the depth and the width. Roughly how that. far down do they go? I know it's going to vary. 35 depending. to 50 feet. Wow, that is yeah. crazy deep. It is crazy deep. It's like a condominium tower on the beach. I know, seriously. Yeah. But that's really good for construction because then you don't have to worry about your house being like five blocks down in a bad storm. Totally. Some Will of those stuff, wash away. Some of the beach shacks, you know, built in the mid 50s or 70s or whatever, they weren't built like that. Totally, yeah. So um, are they always on the pylons or the stilts, if you will, for lack of a better word? Not always. Generally, if they're on the beach, they are. Um, but mainly, the, the high-velocity zones tend to be right on the beach. The intercoastal has some high-velocity zones where they require these pilings. Uh, but generally, we're talking about beachfront pro- projects. Right. Yeah. And, of course, other, other uh, construction issues, too. Windows and impact-rated glass and doors and uh, strapping and all kinds of hardware and things to hold your structure together make sure it doesn't come apart should you get a big 90 mile an hour gust of wind or something you don't want your roof flying off and here's the thing if you think about all those details when you build it or model it or reconstruct it those are all factors in insurance now absolutely so your insurance companies are actually paying very close attention to the construction of your house if your house isn't already up to snuff then your rates are going to be different than they will be if it's a newer constructed home or something that's been brought up to code Steve, you've been around for a long time like me, so I think you'll agree that the way insurance companies write loan or write homeowners insurance these days is totally different. So they used to basically give you a policy which was reasonable and pretty much, you know, that was it. That was a policy. And so now they pol- they price that policy at the high end. Yeah. of the policy and you have to get your four point of your wind mitigation or, you know, provide some construction details in order to get those discounts to bring that policy down to a reasonable level. You're seeing the correct. same thing. That's right. And there are also uh, state and federal rules that limit the amount of competition in your areas where you are. So unfortunately you're kind of locked into working with a very limited supply of insurance companies. And so they kind of dictate to you how much you're going to pay. And it's, it, it could be a whole lot more competitive environment 
Um, but the the rules and regs uh, keep it from being uh, that competitive. So you're kind of locked in with these guys a lot of times. And there have been some properties that we've seen that the owners, um, they move from out of state or whatever, and they want to come in and do some remodeling. And it's interesting. There's many counties that will not actually give you a permit until you make some changes and comply with those coastal construction rules. Correct? That's right. Yeah. And there there's such things as um, uh, FEMA has also got limitations on how much improvement you can actually do on a piece of property. If your house is below the base flood elevation, the 100-year base flood elevation, your finished floor in the lowest part of your house, if it's below the 100-year base flood elevation, sounds complicated, but it's actually it's just a, right. it's a height. And if you're below that height, then uh, there's a very limited amount of money you can put into your house. What are those limits? Do you know? Yeah, it's a 50% rule. Basically, it's That's called right. the 50% rule. I've heard that. And so if your house, exclusive of the, the ground and the lot, uh, is valued at uh, a certain dollar amount, then you can put half of that dollar amount back into the house. So let's say you have a $300,000 I was going to say, house. you made one little very clear distinction there when you said exclusive of the land and the lot. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Because the the insurance company is, or or FEMA is, I think, going to be responsible for the project if the insurance company's default. And so the uh, FEMA has got a big hand in these rules and regulations. So they put this limitation. There's a crazy part, too. A lot of people don't even know this, um, but but FEMA will only pay a flood insurance claim twice on one property. Interesting. Did you know that? I did not know that. Only will pay it twice. So let's say you, mm. you know, a home has been flooded, I don't know, back in the 60s with Hurricane Donna. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, fast forward, we had Charlie and all those storms that rolled in in 04. And let's say there was another flood claim made then. Guess what? They're not getting not flood lot. insurance on that house. They That's will not incredible. insure it again. And most people don't even know that. It's one of those crazy, quirky things. I like no you idea. have to be born and raised here to, and, and have mm-hmm. experienced that or know a customer that has to It'd even know that. Be an eye opener if you owned a house that had already had claims made on it. Yeah. Or maybe you even knew that. Like maybe yeah. the seller disclosed that, oh yeah, it was clean. It was remodeled. And yep, we, we took care of all of that, the flood damage and everything. So you knew about it. Now you have it. And then, you know, here we have, I mean, what was it just a year or two ago we had all that crazy flood like Bayshore was flooded and like mm-hmm. you couldn't even get down there to show property or anything oh yeah and there was a many many places that got flooded because it rained every day for like i was starting to wonder if noah's ark was going to roll it was like in 40 days and 40 it nights was, it was amazing yes and we just had so much rain that there was many people that got flooded during that as well and so we saw that come up where you know oh, yeah. people basically you know or even worse yet we had a customer one time that they actually paid cash for a property and uh, we told them, get flood insurance. It's not going to be required because you don't have a lender and they're not making you get it, but get flood insurance. It's going to be really, really important that you get flood insurance. Yeah. Somehow they missed that detail and didn't get it. Oh. Or we told them to get it and they uh, something happened. They, they didn't, didn't get, get it, it or didn't renew it or something. And uh whole house got flooded oh, with, with all that water, like totally destroyed. That wasn't fun. Like nothing left. But the, you know, I mean, at that point, Steve, the best thing is just to, to rebuild. Don't you think if it's that low? Yeah, if the destruction is such that, you know, just really, if the work is beyond, you know, practicality, then you just got to build new. So crazy. All right, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. We are having a super exciting show today regarding coastal construction and all sorts of stuff. We're here with Steve Perry, and you can get us at our off-air number at 813-377-2775. We'd love to connect you with Steve, or if you need our help, we'd love to help you. Buy, sell, move in, move up, move out. 813-377-2775. We'll be back in just a minute. Stick around. Maggie traffic is next. But first, if someone else's negligence has caused you to suffer a brain injury, the trial lawyers of Popping Guy, a personal injury law firm, are the ones to help you out. Give them a call, 727-461-HELP, 727-461-4357, or log on to popinguy.com. If you're coming in 275 from the north end up around Lutz all the way to the downtown Tampa Interchange, it is okay right now, problem free. Then through the interchange of the Howard Franklin Bridge, that's doing good. Watch out in Brandon area, Highway 60 westbound at Ridgewood. Still got an accident there. And uh, a new one in Tampa just occurred, Waters at Armenia. Now, as far as Pinellas County, nothing reported right now. All the bridges are checking clear. 
This report is brought to you by CC's. Only at CC's enjoy the $5 and change unlimited buffet. All your favorite pizza, pasta, salad, and dessert all for one great price. CC's. Prices may vary. 78 now in Tampa, 78 St. Pete, 73 in Clearwater. High today, 88. Memorial Day weekend, baby, and we're open. That's oh, right. are we open every night till like 8 or 9, 10 o'clock? We don't care. We don't go home. <laughs> That's right. We are open all Any weekend. Any Priscilla Kia store all over the state, we're open this at least Memorial 9 Day weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we're Memorial all the time. Day. We're open all the time. Big weekend here in the car business. Big weekend in the Facillo stores. And big weekend of giving away gifts. Big, big surprise huge. included with your purchase or lease of any new Kia this weekend. So come shop us this Memorial Day weekend. You got four days to shop, four days to get that surprise included with your purchase or lease. Plus, Billy is ripping up contracts, which means you have four days of chances to walk home with a free car. It's incredible, and I really get excited about Memorial Day because it's a fun time. Fun time to sell cars because we're always so busy, Caroline. A lot of people are off, of course. It's a great time and, to buy a car, Oh, too. my God. It's tremendous. We go. We have a good time. Crack open a couple beers every once in a while. We have a oh. laugh. What the hell? Yeah. That's all. should have a barbecue. It's about. We can do that, too. I yeah. like barbecues. We hope you guys have it's a wonderful It's going to be Memorial you. Come see us. Here's a recipe for some fun. Take two microphones and a telephone. Then mix in a redneck like Q105's Mason Dixon and a former Army sergeant and radio guy like Charlie Oaks. Put them on the radio every day at 11 a.m., turn them loose, then open up the phone lines to add spice with your comments. The result is an entertaining hour on Mason Dixon Wide Open with the Sarge. You can be part of the show every Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. till noon on Money Talk 1010. Your toll-free number to call in is 888-404-1010. They'll be talking about whatever's on their minds and your mind. And with these two, you never know where that'll take them. No subject is going to be out of bounds. Just keep it clean. The subjects go from political talk to what's happening in Tampa Bay. And they love anything with wheels and an engine, so cars will always be a subject. Listen to Money Talk 1010 every Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. for Mason Dixon Wide Open with the Sarge on Money Talk 1010. What if you took time out for you? Just an hour of your week for a little mental tune-up. How you face the challenges of the day always depends on your mindset. Mindset Matters with your hosts, Dr. Gina Midyet and Roxanne Wilder. Airs today at noon on Money Talk 1010 AM and 103.1 FM. Dr. Gina is here to take your calls and share practical tips for self-improvement and finding your most authentic voice. Today at noon on Money Talk 1010 AM and 103.1 FM. Tune in to Mindset Matters because it does. Listen up, Tampa. This is National Best selling author Chris Hogan, and I'm excited to announce that the Smart Money Tour featuring youth and money expert Anthony O'Neill and I are headed your way on September 19th. At this evening event, we will walk you through the plan that has helped millions get out of debt and retire with dignity. A plan that focuses your money on what matters most. It's time to live more and worry less. Visit DaveRamsey.com, that's DaveRamsey.com, or call 888-22-PEACE to reserve your Smart Money seats today. Welcome back. This is Tampa Home Talk. Thank you so much for joining us today for the show. We're glad you're here. And if you're just catching the show, we are in the studio today with Steve Perry. He's with J.S. Perry and Company. And we've had some really fun conversations this morning already, haven't we, about flood and construction? Oh, yeah. All that fun stuff. Uh, But those seriously are things that your contractor should know. And I imagine... You know, if you're, say, even competing, Steve, against another contractor that's talking about even doing a renovation project yes. or building a new home, um, it, it's pretty interesting because you could tell the guys that don't normally build in the constructions, in the flood areas, right? Or oh, on the absolutely. beaches. Yeah, if they're not familiar with the rules and regulations and the uh, codes and stuff that apply, then they're they're going to... They, they're they're going to probably miss some things, no doubt. And with those extra requirements comes extra cost. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. it's just the way it is, right? It's one of the it's one of the, the 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 luxuries of living on the coast or living on the water or living near the beach, and it's just uh, it kind of goes with the territory. Absolutely. Um, so, tell me about what's some of the coolest projects you've ever built? Could be on the beach or not. Mm, wow. Let's see. We've done some some amazing historic uh, restorations. We've done some contemporary homes that were that were just unbelievable. Uh, we've built a lot of traditional homes. I probably one of the most notable projects we've done in the past couple of years was a, a major project down in 
uh, Treasure Island, which was an oceanfront project, 9,800 square feet under roof, beautiful contemporary custom four-story home, all cast out of concrete and glass and steel. Amazing project. Had a three-story glass staircase going right up through the core of it, which was inspired by the the, uh, Apple um, store in New York City. The guy, the my client was in there, and I said, "I want that. that. I want that." And so, uh, so, so how we, expensive is it to build a glass it. staircase? Ooh. Well, you know the original numbers were coming in on this particular staircase, and I don't want to freak people out because this is not a. This is a custom tweaky, is, quirky oh, little. Yeah, this is a very, very customized home that's quite out of the ordinary. Yeah, somebody's okay. like, I want this. I don't care how much it costs. Absolutely, and so um, we got prices upwards of. Uh, uh, four hundred sixty-five thousand to build the staircase. Just which, the which staircase. I'm not surprised about because you got to think about this. You're walking on glass, yeah. So it has right. to be able to support a person or two. That's right. That's right. So it was a, it was a pretty expensive proposition. But what we did was we re-engineered it because the owner just said, "Okay, it's not worth that that's, much." To that's me. the cost of the whole house. That's right. He said he said I'd spend a lot, but I wouldn't spend that much. And so. Um, I think we we ended up spending I don't know two fifty to three hundred thousand on the staircase, but we completely was it still re- glass? Was all, well, it was it was glass and steel then, and uh, we we reengineered it. Had the architect uh, reengineer it, and then uh, uh, I put the team together, and we just uh, brought brought a, a, a group of people together from welders to uh, auto body finish guys, glass specialists, mm-hmm. and all kinds of different trades. And then my guys did a tremendous amount of wor- amount of work on it, also with my own crew. And so we probably had, uh, I don't know, 1,500 man hours in the staircase by the time it was all set. Is that like some of the best, funnest part of your job, like figuring those little things out on those cool little projects you've uh, never done before? It was amazing. And those are the things that really kind of make my job interesting and it really kind of brought me to this industry because I'm not in this business by default or any other reason I'm in it because it's a, it's a, creative, uh, it's a creative process. And as an artist, which I'm an artist and uh, I enjoy... Uh, the creative process, and I like creating these crazy one-off projects. It's just yes. a blast making them come together and putting the owners in them. Definitely, definitely. It's it's interesting, too, because you know somebody like me, this is all I've ever done, right, for 24 years, is mm-hmm. be involved in the real estate industry. But even with that, like I, I certainly don't have your knowledge when it comes to construction, but I'm going to notice way more than the layperson. Oh, yeah. And so you know, I remember this one property that I had showed, I think it was like in Hernando Beach, like really close to mm-hmm. or on a canal or something. Yeah. And um, it was just some of those details, like you wouldn't really see a lot of stuff in that area. But they literally, like we were in the garage, I noticed immediately we're still beams like you know most people are not looking up paying yeah. attention to those details They're not looking but at i it. noticed the steel beams and like all this stuff and i'm like this quality of construction is amazing like i just noticed it right away being in the home oh yeah yeah and and those are the types of details we really focus on and those are the but, things but that, the traditional agents they wouldn't notice that right totally true yeah most agents will walk in and say okay this is a product i gotta get on the market we'll get some photos and we'll get this baby on the market and sell it and 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 people like yourself. Those are, are selling features. Yeah, those are selling features, and when you notice them and can point them out to people, it could be a major selling point in the house if somebody really understands what's gone into these things. I would certainly buy a home like that over one that didn't have it. Like if that was one of the ones that was on my list, I would probably add it to the top of the list. Yeah, just because it had the steel beams for the construction. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, and and it was built higher than like everything else, which I know affects flood insurance. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. So it was interesting, too, because I have to bring this up, and I don't want to run out of time to talk about it, but I know before the show we were talking, I said, hey, have you ever done any cool little quirky projects or anything like out of the norm? And you said you actually built a radio studio one time for someone. I did. Yeah, it was actually it was a recording studio. He's a sound engineer and musician, and he wanted to create a, a just a world-class, ultra-high-quality, techno-advanced uh, recording studio where he could uh, bring musicians in from all over the world and they would have a facility where they could record, um, you know, record quality uh, recordings. And right. they has got all these isolation booths all over the place. And We were talking before the show, and, and radio is a very interesting thing. And, you know, most people have never visited a radio station or anything like that. And we actually built a studio out in our office. Mm. <laughs> and we've been playing around with the acoustics, and it's, it's a very hard thing to get. And there's a lot that goes into not only the equipment and just the, all the nuances that go into it, but the construction, too. Absolutely. It's a very specialized piece of work. And to get the acoustics right, it really takes somebody that's got the experience, understands how sound will bounce around in a space and the reverberation from outside sources 
You get a truck that drives by. You get a HVA, a piece of air conditioning equipment nearby. How is that all going to affect your recording? And so all these things have to be taken into account. And most people don't think about that. I didn't. I mean, I'm in the studio every single week. And I, you know, I found some YouTube video yeah. that was showing sound, like in how sound worked, but it was a visual, yeah, uh, you know, where he literally showed the light kind of bouncing off the wall, which is what the sound oh, does. Oh, wow, that's interesting. And yeah. it was so neat. So what are some of the details you put into the studio? Well, one thing we had to do is every single wall in the, in the building had to be isolated from the concrete floor. So we had to put special matting underneath the, the, the wood framed wall, um, the ceilings were also suspended from the structural ceiling up above with a with a with a shock absorption system. So they had spring spring loaded little mechanisms. So this entire ceiling was suspended on a shock absorber, and so yeah. So then that would uh, uh, just uh, you know soften the amount of reverberation in the space. And then of course we had ultra thick walls, sound glass everywhere. All the walls were not parallel they were all at odd angles so that the sound would not just bounce around the room yes it would just die in the room the sound would just go dead and you said amazing sound glass what sound glass well what we would do is we did the double just like in this studio here we would take a couple of different layers and put them up um on an angle and then the glass was quite thick and then all around that we would we filled with sand so the entire wall was filled with sand nice and it just it was like this deadening that occurred. So you could talk in there and everything was so crisp. It was just amazing. Which is exactly how a studio should be. That's exactly right. And see, I didn't really know anything about that because this guy was a a recording engineer, lived right next door to a custom home that I built. And he said, Hey, would you be interested in building my recording studio? And I said, I would take a look at it. Next thing you know, we're building his recording studio. It's pretty cool to add that to your, to your checklist though. It's incredible. Isn't it? Yeah. The guy was great to work with too. And can I say his name or? Name yeah, or sure. Yeah, it's Clear Track uh, Productions there in Clearwater, and the guy's name is Mike Johnson. Does a fantastic job. But anyway, quite a quite a facility he's got. Wow, I'm gonna have to go check out his stuff for sure. Yeah. So what what do you enjoy most about the work you do? Is it doing all these custom, different, quirky stuff? I love it all. I mean, I, uh, honestly, I mean, the, one of the key things that I do is I try to find a customer that really is going to want what we're going to offer them. And what we're going to offer them is we're going to offer them service, but we're also going to offer them a degree of care that goes way beyond just making a buck. And so we're genuinely interested in actually delivering a fantastic product to them that's been well thought out, has been designed correctly, and where all the details come together. Because when they leave that house or when, when, when they move into that house and we leave that house, we want to make sure that they're totally in love with it. and mm-hmm. It's just, everything you know, they dreamed and thought yeah. of. And and it and it makes it fun for us, and you know we're we got to have that when we're done. It's and it's interesting because you know contractors are a dime a dozen, just yeah. like real estate agents are a dime a dozen. It's true, and that's why we offer our ninety day love where you live guarantee, and so we really mean that. And I t- I tell my people all the time, and I know Lisa's heard me say it a million times. I tell them you can't teach care. Like the right. people we hire, they either have it or they don't, and if it's they true. don't have it, they're not a good match. No doubt about it. And it's it's just something you either have it or you don't. That's right. And that's why we have people standing in line for our projects, but we pick our customers. We want to work on great projects with great customers. It's going to be a marriage. Yeah, definitely. It is. And, um, you, you know, especially with something like a home, like it's, it's people's biggest deal. Like, totally. you know, they, they want to really love where they live and it's important to us too. Big decision for them. It is. It really, really is. So what part about your service would you say stands out the most? Probably the, um, the creativity, the the willingness to get in and problem solve and come up with creative out of the box solutions and to come up with design solutions that really meet their needs. They're not just superficially thought out. They're actually intended to solve some problem for the owner. And I imagine you have probably some ideas here and there as well um, to either cut costs or change the design a little bit or something to, to add to that they hadn't really thought about. Absolutely. And everybody's got a budget. I don't care how wealthy they are. Everyone has a budget. Yes. Even the multimillionaires that we built for all over the place. These well, guys have, have to. They have budgets. And so it's our goal to help them refine their ideas and take them down and tweak them and do whatever we got to do to make the numbers work. And then we find the value and we create the product for them. So, uh, What's one of the coolest projects you've done aside from the guy with the glass staircase? Because that's yeah. pretty cool. And the radio studio is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Well, we did this amazing uh, historic restoration in Indian Rocks Beach one time uh, for this guy. Young guy uh, owns a, owned a uh, software company, started it after he got out of college from nothing. Put wow. himself through college, started this company, 
then uh, later on in life, he was walking down the beach one day and where he used to go to the beach many years ago, lived in upstate New York or New York and uh, said, hey, that house is available. I'm buying it because you remembered it from a kid. Really? But the house was falling down and it was mm. right on the beach. And he said, I'm going to renovate this thing. And so he brought me in and some other people. And I was the only guy that didn't run for cover when they looked at the house. And I actually crawled underneath the house and helped him figure out what was wrong with it. But anyway, we completely rebuilt the foundation and the entire house, restored it back to its original splendor, and uh, it's one of my favorite projects. And then ultimately, we did the the neighbor right next door did the same thing for him because he was so in, in love with the and project. And I'm curious, too, and we're going to have to probably answer this question after the break, but I'm curious, like, at what point do you say, okay, this is too much to rehab, renovate, we're going to have to tear it down and start from the ground up? And we're going to have to answer that question when we come back right after the break. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. We're here with Steve Perry, and we'll be back in just a minute. Stick around. Let's face it, having a criminal arrest record really stinks. And it hurts when others make unfair judgments about you. Employers, landlords, lenders, even the person you may want to date. Take down this number, 813-254-9205. Attorney Jim Souza has sealed and expunged arrest records for more than 20 years. Go to RestoreMyName.net or call 813-254-9205. Are you looking for your next home? The truth is that most buyers want a home, not a real estate agent. I understand, but factually, you need an experienced agent on your team like me. I'm Katrina Madewell with Heller Williams Realty, host of Tampa Home Talk. And I've been in the real estate and mortgage industry selling homes for more than 23 years. And it would be our pleasure to help you find your next home. Love where you live or I'll fix it. Welcome home. 813-936-2302. 813-936-2302. The average commute to work in Tampa Bay's traffic is about an hour a day. Get stuck on a bridge or any major highway because of an accident or construction and you can double it. Money Talk at 1010 AM or on FM at 103.1 has help with reports from Pat George and Mark Charles. 888-404-1010 with Money Talk Traffic Ranger info. 888-404-1010. Hear Tampa Bay's best traffic on Money Talk at 1010 AM or on FM at 103.1. Call us 888-404-1010. Diabetes and increasing levels of prediabetes are a concern for all Americans. Addressing this epidemic is an uphill battle that places a huge burden on the U.S. healthcare system and results in billions of dollars of lost productivity each year. I'm Representative Amanda Murphy from Florida, and I want you to know the importance of getting screened for type 2 diabetes. Early intervention is critical to help control blood sugar levels. Consistently high blood sugar levels in the body are dangerous and may not present symptoms until it's too late. In fact, type 2 diabetes significantly increases the risk of complications including heart disease, kidney damage, and eye damage. If you have type 2 diabetes, your doctor can work with you to develop an early intervention treatment plan, including diet and exercise that fit your lifestyle. Be proactive about your health, and please talk with your doctor today about testing your blood sugar levels. To learn more, visit womeningovernment.org. Thanks for joining us on Money Talk at 1010 AM, 103.1 FM, and 99.5 FM HD2. This is Station Manager Charlie Oaks. If you have any suggestions or would like to do your own show, give me a call on my private line, 727-563-8831. Your suggestions have brought more local programming and the new FM signal. If you have an idea for a local show and would like to be part of Money Talk, call me. Money Talk is a family, and you have a vote in what the family does. Thanks for listening. 1010 AM, 103.1 FM, and 99.5 FM HD2. Welcome 
Welcome back. This is Tampa Home Talk. Thanks for joining us today. We're glad you're here for the last segment of the show. Uh, you can catch us here at Money Talk 1010 AM. We're also on 99.5 HD2 if you have HD radio in your car. And we're also on 103.1 FM. And we'll be here same time, same place every week. We want you to love where you live. And if you want to connect with myself or Steve or any one of our guests, we'd love to assist you. Our number off air is 813 813- Three seven seven twenty seven seventy five. Again, that number where you can reach us is eight one three three seven seven twenty seven seventy five, and you can call or text that number. So, I was asking you, see, it was interesting. You're talking about this little renovation project. Oh yeah, that you had on the beach, and in my question was, you said you were the only contractor that didn't run because yeah. it was a, a bit dilapidated, I guess to say oh, the yeah. least. So, at what point do you go? You know what? This is just too much. I know you want to renovate it, but it's probably money better or well spent to just tear it down and start over. Well, quite honestly, I mean, we would have had to radically change the house, the footprint of the house, because we were grandfathered into a certain footprint. So what does that mean? That means that we were allowed to to keep the house the way it was. If we had torn the house down, we would have to scale it back and reduce the footprint of the house because we exceeded the current setbacks. Oh, you so can, can we explain that? Can we talk about that for a minute? Yeah. So let's say the typical lot... Like, tell me about that house, and then tell me what would change if you tear it down. Yeah, so so let's say that, and I forget the specifics on the dimensions here, but let's say that the setback is 10 feet from the side of the property. And the setback is how far you can build from the property line. Correct. Yeah, you can't build into the setback. So it basically makes sure that you have space between houses. Otherwise, the houses could just be bumped right up against each other. Well, I mean, people forget sometimes you need to be able to get equipment back there or different things for various reasons, too. Definitely. Definitely. Utilities and so forth. And so this house, the way it was designed back in 1915 or 1919, it was, um, when this house was originally built for a, for a, um, a cigar guy from Tampa, um, this, um, uh, this house was built to totally different standards, to totally different um, zoning requirements. So as it sits right now, it exceeds these setbacks. Mm, so it would have been into the setback of Correct. where you could build new. That's right. If we had torn the house down and tried to put it back exactly the way it is, they wouldn't have let us. They'd say, you got to shrink it back a little bit. Got to make it smaller. Can you build up or that's even restricted? We can, we can build up, but that is restricted as well. Um, but the owner said, you know what? I want this house the way it is, but I want to rebuild it and I want it back to its original splendor. We want to make it back the way it was. And so really the, the cost was less of a factor. Uh, for him, but um, it was, you know, I did make the recommendation. I said, have you thought about tearing this down and rebuilding it? And he said, yeah, I have, but I don't want to do that. And I said, all right, we'll say no more. I'll do it. And so, you know, we, we got uh, the most amazing amount of compliments from people that walked by for, for about a year when this project was going on. A long project, huh? It was quite a bit. We will just bear in mind that we completely reconstructed this house and jacked it up and put a whole new foundation underneath its systems, everything reframed about 80% of the lumber in the house termites weather damage it was over 100 years old I imagine by the Close time you're done with that though like that thing's gonna stand easily for another um, 100 years <laughs> it's one of the best built houses on the coast in wow. that area right now and so um but we'd get people that would say wow we're so glad you didn't tear that house down that's amazing what you've done and we we you know so we enjoy that we like hearing that you know? we got a lot of people that have lived here for a long time like me you know so when they come in and just kind of rip out those old structures it takes away a little bit of the character element of the area it takes away some of the old florida the old beach style yeah yeah for people forever that have lived here like me yeah that's right that's right and so it's 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 kind of incumbent upon guys like me to try to when we go back in and and put these houses back into place we try to put them back in a way that's you know, as much in keeping with something that's attractive and something that that flows with that beach idea, instead of just building some crazy thing there mm-hmm. that's, you know, not going to be appealing. And what type of challenges do you face in that sort of project where you got to restore everything in the house? Yeah, well, you know, I guess there's the the point of um, we've got to. Well, what kind of limitations do we have? I guess it boils down to the owner's vision and the owner's pocketbook and what he yeah. wants to spend on it. So that's your biggest challenge is trying to stay within the uh, the budget for what you want to do? It's a, it's a challenge. It is a challenge. and But we're right there with the customer helping them make these decisions and figure out the smartest ways to do things. And so so since we're talking about this project, what was your snafu or your little unexpected thing that you had to deal with on the project? Oh boy, let's There's always that. loads oh, yeah. of those, aren't there? Oh, the, definitely. Definitely. Um. I think initially when we first went into the project, we had not planned on rebuilding the foundation. Oh, okay. And 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 we were going to replace some beams and tear out some walls and do some modifications. And the further we got into the house, the more we realized, 
just how degraded this house had become over the past hundred years. Now, did, was it a foreclosure or something? Uh, it was a foreclosure. Gotcha. And the owner uh, owner bought it from the bank, I believe. I'm not exactly sure who he bought it from, but he got it. He paid paid nicely for it because these it properties yeah. not cheap, no matter no, how you look at it. That's right. And uh, but um, he 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 just kept us going kept us going and said okay let's do this okay and then we brought a really fabulous architect in and just designed everything and structurally it was just beyond belief so we put all new beams in and everything was just hurricane proof and restructured which which that's a huge deal like what are some of the things or easy ways or or things you can do to make a property somewhat disaster resistant well it probably the easiest thing you can do is if you ever put a roof on is to to put hurricane attachments onto the rafters and tie it the the straps Yeah, because mm-hmm. those are the, that's part of the wind mitigation um, form that you got to fill out with the insurance companies. And so they're looking for that. If you've got your roof anchored to the structure, that's a big that's a big plus point. Can you ever do more or extra? You guys put straps on both sides of the trusses? or you how can do you do that? Yeah, sure, sure. And there's um, uh, the basic requirements, but you can overdo it too. And many of our projects are way over designed, quite honestly. But, you know, I don't think there's a lot of details in that quality. And I don't think it's a bad thing necessarily to go overboard a little bit. No, no. You know, and we do most of the time our, our uh, the wood framing that we're putting in on these types of projects is usually over designed quite a bit. Um, but, uh, you know, also if cost becomes a major factor, then we'll skin it back down closer to what the code, bare minimum code requirements are. But uh, generally, our customers are like, no, 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 we want more. We want it. We want to be able to land a helicopter on this place. <laughs> Have you so built say, one okay. of those? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And so, um, so if they, oh, um, oh, I'm sorry, we haven't actually, I haven't actually built one for a helicopter to land on, but we've built them strong enough for a helicopter to land on. Just in case they wanted to buy the helicopter yeah. later to land it on the roof. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, what a great show we've had today, Steve. I've had a blast hanging out with you. Go ahead and give out your off air number, and then we'll give out ours in case they don't catch it. What's the best great. number for people to reach you? Yeah, the best number to for to reach me personally is on my cell at seven two seven. Four seven nine two one zero four, and I can be reached uh, a lot yeah. on that. So you can call or text Steve at seven two seven four seven nine twenty one zero four, and you yeah. can get us too. We will be happy to connect you with Steve as well. We'll share your information on Tampa Home Talk. We're across the web on Facebook and just all around. And our off your number is eight one three three seven seven twenty seven seventy five. Again, 813-377-2775. Remember, love where you live or we're going to fix it. Welcome home. Thank you, Katrina. It's been great being here. Really enjoyed it. Definitely. We're out. Have a great week. Take care. You too.